I assume, I'm not sure, you know. Uh, right, so uh, there's not much time, so I will try to cover as much as I can in the last 15, uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Right, so I would uh, first like to point out that the origins, uh, the origins of this, uh, this uh, project are rather, were rather unclear. Uh, initially, this was going to be a very uh, sort of dry comparative paper, much in the same way as uh, uh, my, uh, the, as the preparation of my colleagues from the um, business communication and translation classes. And, uh, however, uh, once I actually approached my academic supervisor, who is, of course, our own Dr. Vidal, you know, who is sadly not with us today, but here with us today, um, and after sort of familiarizing myself with her work in Byron uh, and reading her response in Bulgaria, I really decided this, uh, that. Uh, this uh, project should be focused around the reader rather than around the text. So this is just to illustrate that the text became a secondary uh, concern. Uh, that is not to say that translation theory is not in the paper. Uh, uh, rather, it serves as a tool to help guide both me and my readers and my audience uh, through the text. Um, now, uh, but uh, the actual impetus when I actually started working was after my discussions with uh, students in first and second year, uh, when it uh, became obvious that there is this necessity of a course that deals with uh, translation and science fiction. Uh, I sort of tried to, um, so my idea was to use this as a test bed for research done in the name of uh, compiling future course based around science fiction and translation. Um, uh, once I actually got these two ideas, uh, I wanted to make sure that I'm not stepping on anybody's toes. Uh, there, there are no such projects uh, as far as I'm aware. Uh, very few uh, critical responses and uh, uh, publication responses in Doom in general. And um, so I want to make sure that I'm using very solid translation theory. So we have a few names, of course. Uh, Andrew Fevre, Lawrence Vinuti, Eugene Nye, the figure most prominently. Um, Andrew Fevre's notion of uh, linguistic and textual grids is the thing I've uh, referred to throughout my text. Uh, Lawrence Vinuti's work on ethnocentrism and tourism translation. And of course, Eugene Nye presents the all important notion of uh, equivalence when it comes to translation. Uh, of course, uh, because this deals with Bulgarian as well, uh, Dr. Ryan Zidarova. Uh, features when it comes to her work on contemporary Bulgarian vocabulary. Uh, Gideon Turi provides the notion of necessity for uh, special sorts of attention to all stages of translation. This is just to highlight the names I've referred to, I'm sure I have missed someone. Now, um, uh, during the initial stages of the data acquisition process, it became very clear that the one, what I wanted to do would be uh, uh, intensely speculative. I, if I uh, wasn't able to approach someone who would be familiar with the inner workings of how translation is done, what I want to deal with is uh, the cultural notions uh, uh, in the original text and how they were handled, how they were rendered in the translation uh, by uh, the translator we were to for. So um, I had many questions, and uh, the only way to answer them was to actually talk to someone. It, it was very simple. So uh, I was, uh, luckily I was able to contact the translator, we left the who was first on my list, she currently teaches English. And um, we had a very nice chat, something I've uh, included the interview with her as an appendix for my uh, paper. Uh, right, uh, so just to exemplify <coughs> what, what happened here. So, um, for example, there is this uh, issue of the English language appendices when it comes to Bulgarian translation of the novel. They don't feature in the Bulgarian translation of the novel. And while I could speculate as to why this happened and how it affected reader, uh, reader's past, I didn't actually know why, and I wanted to know why. It was important. So, uh, the other two was the person who informed that, at least according to her, uh, this happened because of censorship. But, of course, I need the confirmation. So, uh, you know, in 1987, things were still pretty much uh, harsh. Uh, uh, the translation was produced in 87, still well within the, uh, under the cloud of the political doctrine of the era. So, um, another, uh, another example of how important it was to contact the translator was her work with the actual lexicology, with the actual vocabulary in the, in the text. So, 
this comparison, the Fremen are a cultural group, like a sort of a part, cultural party in the, in the narrative. They are rendered as Fogoni in Bulgarian. And uh, this actually happened because the translator felt it was necessary uh, for readers in 1987 to have uh, someone to identify with who is uh, free. This is why she used Fogoni as a term. It was the first uh, rendering she referred to. Um, and uh, this issue of censorship being the cause of uh, the lack of dependencies in the Bulgarian version was actually what gave uh, the formulaic uh, structure of my thesis. Uh, practically one half of my thesis deals with the package such as, such as it is in Bulgarian, Bulgarian translation package. What I would loosely define as my contribution <laughs> to the field, to the uh, this sort of project is that uh, I don't believe we can examine translation as a steroid process that happens in isolation conducted by the idealized figure of the translator without any uh, influence. So we should observe uh, translation as uh, packages of emphasis. It is rather um, appropriate that uh, this presentation happens only two days after the anniversary of Steve Jobs' death. In 2010, when talking about products, commercially available products, Steve Jobs described them as packages of emphasis. This, in, this is something I apply to translation, to translated books who are on the market as well. Um, now, um, so the first chapter basically deals with, uh, is basically a report on the three different editions, the three different packages of, uh, uh, that are available to the Bulgarian uh, readers. Uh, there's one in 87, one in 97, and one in 2004. That's it. Uh, the 97 edition of the, of the book is uh, very hard to find. Uh, there was limited print, and uh, I was only to, able to locate one copy in the National Library. I, in all my years as a new reader, I haven't seen another copy of the 97 edition. Um, and uh, of course, I uh, talk about. Uh, a specific uh, relation of the translations to their respective periods of time. But the important thing to note about the three packages is that the main portion of the text, the actual translation, but as then by the uh, practically uh, practically remains the same throughout the three packages. It's not altered in any way. Uh, the very, there are very few alterations to the 97 edition. In fact, uh, my research aide, Teodoro uh, Postino, and I took the time to uh, list all the differences between the 87 and 97 edition of the book. Uh, they can be and are uh, fitted on a single sheet of paper. That is very, very good. <coughs> uh, uh, first, uh, this uh, uh, issue of terminology here, uh, this came up during research. So, uh, Bulgarian readers, I make use of this term to describe this homogeneous group of readers who I believe are homogeneous. Uh, because of the specificity of the geographic location of uh, Bulgaria, of course, and, and the population numbers. Why, when we talk about the other uh, side, the other, the source text audience, uh, both me and my provider have uh, decided that English language readers is the best um, term to use because it encompasses all sorts of uh, national and geographic considerations. An example is that in, uh, this is. Um, when it comes to identifying with certain groups in the text, uh, there is the uh, issue of a monarchy. The notion of a monarchy is present in the text, and there will be a difference between the level of identification that American uh, uh, readers have and British uh, readers have, obviously, uh, because of history. Um, right, uh, something that does not feature, uh, this was a conscious, uh, conscious choice on my part, uh, something that is not featured in my paper is any any uh, um, explorative uh, sort of work on the human adaptations. This happened uh, mostly because uh, uh, my research showed that um, the subtitles to the 1984 David Lynch adaptation of Dune uh, were actually based on uh, Mr. Trushkova's work with, uh, with the original text. So there was no sort of influence from any adaptation on the translation. Uh, in my discussion with her, she did talk about this. Uh, she did not use any sources, she did not use any additional translations, etc. Um, 
right, if I have to sort of put a ball on things, uh, in terms of my wish to compile a course, of, a course in literature and translation, um, this should be the benchmark. The rendition quality of this book should be the benchmark for all the research that, that will be done in the future by me mostly, actually. Uh, uh, the Lutetushko, the translator, presents a sort of um, internal consistency within the text uh, that is absolutely equivalent to the one in the, in the source text. Um, and uh, in fact, the only two uh, issues we have are the different packages. Because the two different packages, the 97 and 2004 packages, are the only things that disrupt <coughs> this internal consistency of the text. In one case, the, ninth, uh, the 2004 Bard edition uh, doesn't include just the original novel, but the sequel as well, in one big volume. But it is packaged rather surreptitiously as one, as one book. So, so uh, readers uh, get two books translated by two different authors, two different tra translators, and uh, we have a clash of stuff, which is problematic to say the least. The 97 Argus edition restores one of the appendices uh, to the package, but it creates a problem because, as I said, the translation has not been changed in any significant way, but by reintroducing the notion of jihad in the, um, in the appendix, there is no correlation between the vocabulary in the appendix and the uh, main narrative portion of the text. Right, um, and uh, thankfully, uh, hopefully I've uh, mentioned everything that I wanted to mention and I would be uh, happy to answer any of the questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you.